China is controversial. China has apparently banned cryptocurrency, but also launched CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, which apparently track their private citizens' data. At the same time, China is incredibly advanced technologically, economically. Today's guest, Charles Kim, can give us an insider's view of working directly with China on the NFT side of the business. Charles, welcome to the Daily Drop. Good afternoon, Bobby. Nice Great to, to be here. So look, I, I know you're Korean, but you do work a lot in China. How did this happen? Yeah, my experience is from the banking side. Uh, so I've been in finance for about 20 years. Last eight years, uh, I've been working uh, with a Chinese company, uh, one of the largest Chinese investment bank, uh, helping startups actually in the early days raise money uh, for their company. So we did everything from fundraising all the way to taking their company IPO in the U.S. and uh, Asia. So we hear a lot about how rigid China can be, but you know we're hearing it from the media who's not really working with with China. You're working directly with China. So what what is it? What is it like? Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding of working in China. I think you know we hear the headline news, you know. You know, we hear a lot of news about TikTok being a Chinese company, but, you know, it's not, it, it, there, there's heavy regulation, yes, but it's not as bad as people think it is. Um, Chinese government did ban, you know, uh, NFTs and cryptos. Uh, that's from the Western uh, countries, but they do believe in the whole concept of digital uh, and cryptocurrency. That's, so that's really interesting. Okay, so to clarify, so crypto actually it is banned in China, right? Yes, it's banned. And I think it's banned in about eight different countries right now. And I think the biggest reason for the ban is, uh, number one is uh, they need to understand who the players are. You know, they don't like the fact that, you know, they can't track people. Obviously, there's a lot of people that want to move uh, financial assets out of China and the government needs to keep track of that. So for them, it's about protecting assets within China that leaves, you know, obviously the borders of China. It is interesting, though, right? Because, but so you say, like, they also do acknowledge um, the legitimacy of blockchain technology. They believe in blockchain technology, but they just want to be able to control it. Is that the idea? That's absolutely correct. So, you know, China is very progressive when it comes to digital. And you can see that by, you know, companies like ByteDance, uh, which is TikTok. So, what they need to do is obviously being a, you know, country, a comp a country that wants to control everything, uh, they need to control and understand and know who's, you know, who's um, using these uh, transactions. So do you think that's going to affect, I don't know, the types of technologies that they adopt? Are they going to, are they going to have to change? Or are we going to basically see like a Chinese version um, of some sort of popular blockchains? Yeah, actually, good question. Um, I think you're going to see the Chinese version. So already in China, you know, there are NFTs. You know, you can create NFTs in China, but it's a China version. And if, but the fact is in China, um, you can't use, you know, the typical blockchain to create the NFTs. Uh, and also the NFT cannot be traded in the secondary market. Hmm. So it's interesting, the nuances. So, so do the, is there like Chinese crypto or that's all banned or like, how does that work? Yeah, so they're basically create, creating their own crypto. Uh, to create their these NFTs, but what they don't want is within the structure of, of even in China, they don't want people to start trading these crypto, so where they can't keep track of it. So what they want to do is again have full control of who understanding who the participants are, you know, who are buying and selling, you know, these NFTs. It's interesting too because if you even though China and the U.S., you know, they, 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 I don't know, they have a bit of a cold war happening, but they're kind of doing the same thing. Right. I mean, in different ways, the U.S. is kind of over regulating Web3 so they can control it themselves. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're looking at, you know, basically two systems. Right. So, for example, in China, you know, there is no Facebook or Instagram or, you know, YouTube in China. Right. China has their own version of that. So even TikTok, TikTok China is completely different from TikTok global and what we see in the U.S. So Chinese. People can't access, you know, TikTok that we see today and in all the content 
that's created in these social media are only viewed within the borders of China. Um, look, Charles. So I, we're basically I, working with two different systems. I, I appreciate all of your knowledge. We're going to get into the NBA next because uh, I know you're doing a lot of stuff there. I got Charles Kim here on the Daily Drop.